Hello and welcome back to Curiously Polar. My name is Chris Marquardt and um, with me is Henry. Good good afternoon. We're recording this in the afternoon. How are you doing? Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. <laughs> so we, we haven't we haven't done uh, we have we have had a bit of a break um, and we haven't uh, we kind of forgot how to do this. So let's see. <laughs> I mean, it's a restart. It's a restart. Kind of. No, it's not. But of course, uh, of course, uh, the whole pandemic scenario is changing things in interesting ways, right? We we talked about this right before we started the recording. Um, it is. Yeah. It, it's 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 different to come up with topics, right? Well, it it uh, certainly changes perception and. Um, the podcast is grown out of the curiosity of uh, the both of us traveling in the areas and um, picking up interesting stories here and there and, and hearing something from colleagues and so on. And it's difficult if you're not traveling any longer uh, in yep. those areas, then it's very difficult to pick up those stories. And mm -hmm. the personal point of view changes a little bit. I'm growing vegetables in the garden at the moment. And, and <laughs> Which you normally don't have time for. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Which I certainly am at the moment more concerned than um, certain topics. And those conferences we visited um, the past years, they're, c they're certainly just not happening. And mm -hmm. that makes it very, very difficult to stay connected in, uh, in that particular way that keeps the flow of content running, to put it that way. Mm -hmm. And that makes it interesting. Well, it, it makes it a different kind of a challenge. And of course, um, you you also had had a couple of weeks of work somewhere else. So um, yes. not on a ship. <laughs> no, unfortunately not. But it was so, a very nice um, documentary production we did for German television. I'm really curious about the outcome. It was really, really nice filming. Very cool. It was cool. really good being back in, in, in a job. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, and for me, I mean, it's the same for me. The travel is a is a significant part of what I've done in the past, and teaching photography, um, and uh, doing the things that you and I did up in the north. That is not happening right now. So, it really changes the dynamic. It has also changed the dynamic in the way that. I have now much more time to invest here in, in future-proofing myself um, with things like this video production, for example. I do an almost daily video production right now, which is would have been completely unheard of uh, just half a year ago because because I would have been doing different That's things. That's true, yeah. I mean, so, it's just necessary right now, yeah. Um, so, but exactly. still, but still, so, so the, just, just, I, I'm saying this because the frequency of Curiosity Polar might suffer a little bit, right? So uh, we hope you understand. Um, we hope you are, um, yeah, you're on board with this, um, so to speak. But we have not to intended. put things <laughs> right. The, the title of the episode has nothing to do with the podcast itself. Oh yeah, the title is "It's Gone," <laughs> and uh, it also does nothing has nothing to do with the uh, South Park meme, uh, and it's gone. Uh, no, <laughs> in case you know that one. Um, <clears throat> but just as a reminder, uh, we do have a website, curiouslypolar.com. We are on the social media at curiouslypolar.com, and you can um, you can support us if you want to at curiouslypolar.com on the website. There's a link. There's information about that. Um, which keeps this thing going. But again, um, dropping the frequency a bit is just a, a given right now. So, um, yeah, but still, um, we have a topic today and it's, of course, a wonderfully entertaining one. Um, we're talking about <laughs> interesting things happening in the Arctic <laughs> to the ice. <laughs> It's a it's a very recent topic and unfortunately it's yeah. not as entertaining as I would like it to be. Yeah. Um, it's just a new announcement of um, NASA of the lowest or second lowest um, sea ice extent um, of the Arctic since the beginning of satellite recordings in the late 70s. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we're going to talk about this today. So a sea ice up in the Arctic is ice that forms when it gets cold. Which, mm -hmm. by the way, when I when when this whole Arctic 
complex of topics was new to me. I wouldn't even I couldn't even understand how sea ice can form because there's all salt water up there and as a, when I grow up when I grew up um, you put salt in on ice to melt it so um, I think we have talked oh, we about this do in, in Iceland I, yeah I've I've, I've um, I think we have talked about sea ice formation in a previous episode so don't I think have it to was really episode forty four. Hey, look at that. It was my first know. appearance on that podcast, if I remember there correctly. You <clears throat> and you are, you're, you're the Iceman, so you know everything. Um, I'm not sure about everything. <laughs> well, a lot more than I do. So um, definitely, definitely the right, the, right, uh, the right distribution of skills on this podcast. <laughs> I'm just here to ask the, the silly questions. But um, okay, so the, the Arctic sea ice... Um, is well is it going away what what is what is the extent of what nasa has released yeah so first of all the arctic sea ice plays a very significant role in our climate change models and not only that it also plays a very important role for ecosystems all over the planet because the oceans are all interconnected. So if we have a, a dramatic change in one ocean, that of course affects other oceans as, uh, as well. And uh, of course, also the ecosystems in the oceans. And by that, not only um, the livelihood of coastal uh, communities, but since we export fish uh, everywhere, of course, also everybody else. Um, Arctic sea ice forms usually as a very thin uh, layer of ice um, at some point in uh, September, October, uh, late September, early October. And it, yeah, it travels on the ocean currents within the Arctic. And by that, it used to actually grow bigger and thicker and um, turn into multi-year perennial ice. Um, and that's not happening in, in that extent anymore. So we have those kind of nurseries in the bef uh, before sea and also in the Kara and Laptev Sea um, offshore of Siberia, um, where this is not happening anymore. And we see <clears throat> that the thin one year old ice, which gets m a maximum of two meters thickness, is just much, much more fragile than it appears to be. Two meter thick ice, that sounds like a big bunch, but it's actually much more fragile and gets affected by ocean currents, by wind. It just got smashed into each other. It just crashes, it crumbles. And that is actually a very, very bad thing because by that it can't uh, survive the summer. It can't grow into next winter's um, multi-year ice. Why that is makes... the sea ice important? Why do we need this at all? We need it out of uh, a number of reasons, but the most obvious reason, and that's what, what the picture comes um, into play is, you have a significant um, difference in uh, reflection of the surface of the ice and the ocean. You see that the ocean is much, much darker and by that, of course, absorbs much more of the radio uh, waves that actually got sent in by the sun. So it, um, it actually um, absorbs heat and heats up the ocean by that. The white surface of the sea ice reflects the vast majority, up to 80% of the, of the heat of those radio uh, waves. And reflects that back into the atmosphere and uh, certainly into uh, into space again. But if the sea ice gets thinner, also the color, also the um, so-called albedo, that's the um, term for the, um, for the effect of reflection, that gets lower because a new ice is not that thick. It doesn't get that white. It's not that bright. It's not so effective in reflect of, uh, reflection of that light and that heat. So it absorbs already more heat. Um, an ice-free ocean absorbs up to 90% of the heat that just got injected into the atmosphere by the sun. So, so the ice is not just... The ice is doing two things. It, it keeps our planet cold or cool in two ways. First of all, it's cold, so that's one thing. And the second one is it, it reflects the heat back. And by the way, for those watching this, um, again, this is an audio podcast, but we also do this as a video so you can see some visuals. Uh, and we have just one on the screen here. So the sea ice, we, what we can see is... Um, um, 
is uh, the fluffy the fluffy looking part at the top the white fluffy looking part that's the sea ice right it is indeed yeah it looks a little bit like um candy floss like, um yes it's it's um important for more of those reasons those two reasons are the the, the major factors it's cooling down um but it's also um reflecting and by that it um helps preventing of heating up the atmosphere even more um we have in the in the ocean a very very fragile ecosystem structure so through the whole water column we have certain organisms that are very specialized to water temperature to um, nutritions in the very depth they are operating in and the sea ice plays a significant role here because at the bottom of the sea ice phytoplankton is growing it's actually a plant that needs the ice but it also needs some light gets the ice thinner we w won't have the possibility for the phyto uh, phytoplankton to grow actually if we have less phytoplankton we have less food for the smallest um, organisms on the food chain which then eventually um, are the nutrition and the food for animals uh, further back in the food chain like um, cot for example or even further uh, marine mammals like orcas or um, humpback whales and so on so we have a, a big outreach for a small effect so if sea ice uh, goes it's not only that the polar bear has no flows to to hunt from but it's also that we are losing um the the base in the food chain so polar bear for example is like the dominant picture of um, the melting arctic we always see that the polar bear is losing its territory it's um it needs to swim longer distances and so on but it's the apex predator so that's the end of the food chain the significance for for the sea ice already starts at the very beginning of the food chain so it's affecting all organisms that are re related to the arctic ocean or to ocean uh, to the ocean um within the arctic basin mm -hmm. if you like so the polar bear comes at the very end but it's a very nice visual to see the effects of course so um size wise the 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 little tiny little patch of ice on that picture doesn't you know, it doesn't really look that big so um there might be people who ask why why is that i mean there's almost no ice but um we are talking about millions of square kilometers here right it's a pretty big extent there actually it is it's uh, what we see on that picture and that's the the minimum uh, recorded just yesterday so that was um, just announced by the national snow and ice data center in, in boulder colorado mm -hmm. um, is 3.74 million square kilometers so that's what we actually see on that picture um, 3.74 million square kilometers that's roughly 1.4 million square miles for those who live on the other side of um of the atlantic but it's in comparison the average size uh, uh, the average sea ice minimum in the past 20 years has been much much bigger we only have one year that actually has topped this uh, record low and that was 2012 and if I remember back 2012 it was a year with extraordinary heat and the scientists back then they were just arguing on one hand that this is kind of a, a peak an extraordinary peak that's not related to the, the general climate uh, development others argued this is the beginning the visual beginning of climate change and the big hope especially for arctic scientists was that this year the records 2012 has set in many ways and we are talking not only about the arctic sea ice minimum we also talk about the melt of the uh, greenlandic ice sheet we uh, saw a tremendous um, amount of fresh water flowing into the ocean so there's a lot connected to that the big hope of the scientists for 2012 was that this was just an a complete extraordinary event not connected to everything and that this is not the threshold that we just passed now we see that since 2012 we didn't reach the the um significance of that particular year but we've seen that all the years after already set a trend and the trend is it's going much warmer with the sea ice is going much smaller 
uh, than in the years before 2012. And in fact, in the past 15 years, we have the 10 lowest CIS X10s. And this is just something that shows a trend to all skeptics, to all contrarians, uh, which still don't see that this is somehow connected. And it's a very, very short term. And this kind of um, of development usually doesn't happen in, that, in, in such a short amount of time. And we see here a trend that's not only visible on the sea, on, the, on that particular um, ice, but we can see it all around the, the Arctic. We see that the, the heat wave of this year, for example, has set rocket temperatures never seen before within the Arctic Circle. We're talking about 80, uh, 38 degrees Celsius, that's 104 Fahrenheit within the Arctic Circle. It's above 60 C degree north. That this is, is just something unheard of. that's very, very, um, it is indeed unheard of. The last record that got somewhere close was in 1915. That was in, um, in Alaska, and that was something out of the blue. While now we actually see an, a trend, an uh, increasing trend of, of temperatures all over the place. And now we actually see that this effect can be visualized best with the uh, chart we can see right now from Alfred Wagner Institute, where you actually see how the sea ice just, um, yeah, just melts away. And this is just the stretch of one and a half months. This is from the beginning indeed. of August to the mid of September 2020. So it's a dramatic melting of ice there. And you, you can see the different scale of, of, of uh, colors. So you have the, the bright white, that's the thick multi-year ice, but you have on the outskirts that what's melting away within this one and a half, two months is mainly blue or light blue. And this is the, the one year ice. That's a very, very young ice. And it's used to, to stay in on the, on the left side. You can see that in the Beaufort uh, Sea, there used to be um, the nursery, that's where the young ice just got caught up by the before gyre and just stays in there, grows thicker, crashes into multi-year ice and uh, yeah, just has a possibility to turn into perennial year ice. Similar effects we had in the Kara and in the Laptev Sea, and this is not happening anymore. In the Kara and Laptev Sea, what was observed this year is that we have very, very thin one-year-old ice. And the one-year-old ice, it grows much faster in, in, um, in area, but not in volume, because the thin ice is so fragile. It just got picked up by the sea, by the, by the wind, by the ocean currents. It just got crashed, it crumbles. And that leads to the effect that we actually have a polar icebreaker, a research icebreaker that planned to go to the North Pole and just had a very, very short um, amount of time that they needed to, to go through the ice and just figured that they traveled mainly through an open sea with very little ice amount in the, uh, in the area. Mm -hmm. So going, going to, the, um, to the Fram Strait between Greenland and, and Svalbard was no big deal for the icebreaker at that time of the year. And mainly they traveled with five to seven knots, which is uh, insane speed for an area which should be covered by thick multi-year sea ice. So uh, before we recorded, you also talked, uh, we also talked about uh, the current expedition going to the North Pole. Can you give us a status update on that? What's going on there? Yeah, that's it. I was talking about the Mosaic um, yes. expedition. That's a, a one year um, expedition into the Arctic sea ice to and get we've, a better We've had interviews and information about this on previous episodes. Exactly. So, so they, they were they were um, they put their uh, their ship into the ice and then uh, let it drift yeah. towards the North Pole. And um, where are they now? Well, they actually drifted um, not uh, exactly to the North Pole. They drifted um, towards the Fram Strait and just got released there. Mm -hmm. And then they changed for the last lag. They changed the, the, the research of the scientists again. And then they sat back to the North Pole to head to the North Pole because what um, they figured, what already uh, Friedrich Nansen figured, is that the transpolar drift is not really... Um, are calculable in a way that you can really access the North Pole on that drift. So they actually uh, 
planned to go there and to break the ice and go straight to the North Pole to actually understand um, how the sea ice at the North Pole develops. And at the very top of the world, I just figured that the sea ice is A, very, very little, so the amount is just very little, and the thickness is just very, very questionable. It's, it's a very thin uh, layer of ice. So they basically went without much of an effort to the North Pole. And, and that was not expected, was it? Time. That was unexpected for, for okay. everyone. The captain actually just gave an interview and said that that's a dramatic change. He's never seen something like that before. The um, expedition leader said the, the way the, the, the sea presented it, uh, themselves to, to the uh, researchers was just mainly an open sea. We are, we are speaking about an open Arctic Ocean here, going to the North Pole without much of an effort. So the, the eastern part of the Arctic Ocean um, which is close to Siberia, coming from the Bering Sea um, through the Siberian Sea, the Laptev Sea, Kara Sea, Barents Sea, all the way to northern Scandinavia, is pa it's easily passable. It's open, and that's a very dramatic, um, indeed, uh, development we we can can face here. So right now, um, the polar stern, the, the icebreaker, is headed back into the Siberian Sea and is looking for another big ice flow to um, repeat a little bit what they started with a year ago um, to dock the ship, um, to anchor the ship to the ice flow and to investigate how the ice is actually growing, how it starts, how all of that process of the sea ice formation starts to get a better understanding of the changes in the Arctic and why the, the sea ice is not uh, growing thicker anymore, what has changed to the ocean temperatures but also to the ocean currents why does uh does the gyres do not pick up the thin ice anymore and um maintain it to grow to grow thicker all of that needs a better understanding and this expedition here um the mosaic expedition is an extraordinary attempt to to increase the understanding of not only sea ice but all the things happening in the Arctic Ocean, and that's a so, very interesting uh, expedition from that term. So, so let me get this straight: the um, the Mosaic expedition went north, and then they, they they got to the North Pole and back pretty much earlier than expected. A big, uh, much much earlier than expected. Yes. Um, hmm. Hmm. That's a good question. What to say about that? I, I think it's. It, the the thing that this shows is well 2020 is a very special year in many regards uh, we face with a global pandemic that has changed our perception of life in a lot of way, uh, ways it also has um changed the plans of that certain expedition quite tremendously but what it also shows is that the impact we have on climate it's not only a long-term impact, it's a very present um, impact. It's what we yeah. see right now. So we, we saw a couple of papers this year, which actually um, postulated that the melt of the sea ice in 2020 got exhilarated compared to past years for one reason, and that's the human impact is missing. And that's kind of a conundrum. It sounds very weird. It sounds like a contrary here, but the emissions of ships operating in and around the Arctic Ocean has just dropped in 2020 so tremendously that the formation of clouds has just l slowed. So oh, because they less... don't have any, any cores to, for the condensation? Exactly. So we had less clouds, uh, less cloud coverage above the Arctic Ocean. That means that more sun um, intrudes the Arctic Ocean and by that the, uh, the sea ice. So the sea ice melted quicker and faster than all the other years beforehand because of that. That does not mean that there is no climate change and that we actually are um, protecting the Arctic Ocean by more emissions, but it shows that we have a very certain impact on everyday life with what we do in the Arctic. So we can see those patterns very, very clearly. The data, the satellite pictures, the extent of sea ice, all of that shows a very, very dramatic trend. And we now have a proof 
that it's not only a long-term effect we see, it's a very short-term impact we could see on this year's development of the sea ice. Hmm. Are there any projections for where this will go? This is actually a very interesting question because I mean, are we those are we at the at the tipping point? I mean, we everyone's talking about tipping points, right? Um, so, is this a tipping point? Are we over the tipping point already? That's very difficult. It really depends uh, who you ask. Um, there are uh, a number of scientists who um, got claimed to be alarmists back in like ten years ago, because ten years ago there was this uh, big momentum when. Um, the science community, especially the Arctic research community, came together and just presented papers. And the alarmists were saying that at the end of this century, we will see a sea ice free ocean up in the Arctic. Meaning, when scientists talk about an ice free ocean, they mean that we have um, ice flows in a way that they are manageable to push away. So we actually have a navigable, navigatable um, passage up there for commercial shipping. They got called alarmists 10 years ago at the end of the century. We now see that this is already happening. And, the and it's happening faster than expected, right? much faster. The, the more conservative projections right now say that by 2050, in about 30 years time, we will have that sea, um, sea ice free ocean in the Arctic. The more dramatic projections uh, claim that this happens in 2030, which is 10 years from now. So this is the, the range we are facing here between 10 to 30 years from now, we will have in the summer month, an ice-free ocean in in the Arctic, manageable to commercially navigate. So. so, with that in mind, the term global warming sounds a little bit too, yeah, cozy, a little bit too harmless, because warming it, it warming implies implies oh, it's nice and warm, right? I can grow tomatoes, but um, this is global heating. And it is, and, and that and changed, scale. exactly, the, the wording changed a little bit, um, I think roughly a year ago, and I remember we had an episode about that as well, Yes. Um, that especially certain uh, media outlets agreed on changing the terms from global warming to global heating, from climate change to climate crisis, because what, we, what we've seen in the pandemic of, of COVID-19 is that suddenly, if it's life-threatening, there are funds available. They're just popping up somewhere. It is possible to communicate with each other and tackle a threat, a global threat, and find actions about it. And you see, of course, there are differences in the way we are tackling the problem and the, the different types of measurements taken. But it is kind of a coordinated um, effect we, we, we take into action there. And we need something similar for, for climate uh, change. And this is not happening yet. And we still have those debates. We still have those arguments about politicians, about lowering um, emissions until 2050 and so on. Yeah. We've seen just the, the, the current presentations of, um, of, the, of the European Union, of the new Green Deal about lowering emissions or getting um, the European Union carbon neutral uh, until 2050. This is just a time span that's not, that's simply not enough. And we hear the factors that it has a huge impact of, uh, on, ec uh, of the, uh, on the economies, on our uh, certain lifestyle. Of course, it will certainly have, as COVID-19 had. We s we've seen if there is a global threat, it will change the way we live. It needs to change the way we live, because the way we live is the certain reason for what we are facing right now. So we won't go through that without those um, those um, big obstacles we need to, to, to overcome. But there are possibilities and there are um, ways to get out of that. And that's the good news here. We have a number of, um, of scientists that not only say we have the possibility if it's a man-made course, then we have the possibility to change that. And we can do that if we 
start finally take some action and of course as always um, there's a big big uh, part of this is in politics and in um, um, politicians not naming names but uh, denying climate change or trying to do those carbon neutral by 2060 kind of things which don't make a lot of sense so i think it, this is it's really important that um when you go vote vote for someone who's maybe a bit more progressive in that respect right totally agree yeah okay um yeah what a downer <laughs> i was hoping for a bit more entertainment here uh but this is it's a very current topic, so I thought that shit. would be nice. Definitely. Indeed it is. And it's part <sighs> of um, of the polar regions right now. We see yes. similar uh, developments in Antarctica as well. But that's something uh, to tackle later. I hope next week will be a little more entertaining. Next week or whenever we come back with the next episode. Next episode, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Say next episode. It's a much, much safer bet right now. Okay. Um, again, thank you all for... Uh, being listeners for being part of uh, the, the community around Curiously Polar. Um, again, we have 107 with this one, 107 episodes up on CuriouslyPolar.com uh, about all things very north and very south. And of course, we are on social media at Curiously Polar. We'd love to get um, your your feedback, your uh, information, your uh, reach out to us um, and maybe even suggest topics because... Uh, there's always something interesting out there and uh, we're happy that you're here. So um, yeah, come back whenever we are back. And if you haven't listened to the old episodes, um, they are awesome. So there's definitely a lot there. <laughs> they are, they are. Hey, They, they are indeed. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Because um, I've, I've, I've made them and you've made many of them too. So um, yeah, we'll be back soon. Until then, everyone take care and... Bye-bye.